right, so yesterday we got a new Nintendo Direct Mini announced. It was going to be their third-party partners games coming this year. That was a big fat lie. It was kind of strange that this was released as a VOD instead of a live stream. I guess chat is just super nasty. Uh, the show opened with Monster Hunter Rise content. I'm not really sure what to say about this one. If you like Monster Hunter, that's awesome. If you don't, uh, this one's not really going to do anything for you. They mentioned, um, again, they came forward and said this is specifically going to be focused on games coming out this year. Again, that was a lie. Then they announced Near Automata. That that was the confirmation of the, of the what was it, Jeff Grubb leak. Uh, I think it was yesterday or maybe the day before. A uh, AAA third-party game from like four years ago was going to be coming to Nintendo Switch. This was it. I've heard good things about Near Automata. I've never played it. I honestly probably still won't, you know, for people who really love that series or really love that specific game, I've heard that there are multiple endings, so this could be a really fun way to revisit that one. Then there was a game called Lorelei The Laser Eyes. Uh, it's going to be a console launch exclusive. Looked pretty interesting visually. It was, um, it was definitely unique. I don't know. I might pick that one up if I see it on like a cheap eShop sale. Super Bomberman R2. This was actually really surprising. And the reason it was really surprising was because Super Bomberman R launched when the Switch came out. It was like one of, I think, seven launch titles. And that was it. It did not do well. And I'm really surprised that they're following it up with a sequel. Uh, then they announced a Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. Launches next year. Again, going back to the theme of like, hey, they were lying. Uh, but it launches next year. Honestly, this is kind of exactly what I'm wanting for the Switch at this point in its lifetime. More Game Boy Advance games on the Switch. Those games were designed from the ground up to be played on the go in uh, in really uh, bite-sized portions, and, and I think that this is fantastic. I would like to see more of these. I have never been a fan of Mega Man, but I've heard the Battle Network games are really good, and because I'm so into the idea of Game Boy Advance games on Switch, I might pick this one up. Uh, Pac-Man World Repacked. Now, this seems like a it, it's a remake of Pac-Man World. Don't know if anyone's going to be really pumped about this. And I don't know how they try to continue to squeeze more juice out of this fruit. I feel like Pac-Man is undeniably iconic of the, the entire medium of video games, but I just don't really get how you're, how you're transitioning him from, you know, the classic arcade game into other types of gameplay experiences. Never made sense to me. I never, I never felt like this was something I wanted to play. Blanc. Now this is a game, the art style looks like it's almost entirely grayscale, black and white, and it's about a deer and a dog. The art looks incredible. It's coming in February 2023. Again, liars. Uh, I will almost certainly buy this one. This one looked gorgeous, and I'm super excited for it. Then they announced The Secret of Monkey Island. Now, I don't know if this was confirmed for Switch earlier or not, but it is now. It was a huge surprise earlier this year. A lot of fans of Monkey Island were super stoked. It doesn't look like this is my thing. But my friend Tim is super pumped about it, so I'm happy for people like him. And he loves Switch. This game is launching first on Nintendo Switch, so that's also a pleasant surprise for him. Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope. A lot of people were speculating that this would be kind of the closer of the show. It was announced last, I think, June. Seems like there have been some quality of life improvements, new movement mechanics to allow to like change the battles. Uh, Bowser, playable character. Still doesn't really make sense to me that Mario is holding a gun, but I, you know, suspension of disbelief is fine. I liked the first game. I didn't love the first game. I'll probably wait for this one to be on sale on the eShop for like 10 or $15, and then I'll grab it, and I'll play it for three or four hours. This one will come out on October 20th. In my opinion, that's the perfect time slot for this game. That's when Nintendo needs games, especially with Breath of the Wild 2 getting delayed. Then they moved into a something for everyone sizzle reel. There was a game called Little Noah. Um, it's a platform. It actually looked pretty good. Uh, I would be down to play it if I can grab it for like $8 on the eShop. Railgrade is a train management sim. 1000% not my kind of game but it will find its audience. There are absolutely people that will find its audience 
like Seth Macy at IGN. And then they showed off The Legend of Wright. Now this is an RPG that you draw in a notebook. It seems like a really cool idea on paper, no pun intended, uh, but I honestly probably won't play it and I don't think that this, that this idea, it, it's a cool concept that I don't think is gonna translate well into actual gameplay. But we'll see, only time can tell. Sonic Frontiers. This entire game honestly just looks like a modern interpretation of Sonic 06, which is a very, very bad thing. I, I you know, I don't know. I, I'm a Sonic hater. I've never liked Sonic, even like Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I don't like Sonic, so take anything I say about Sonic with a giant grain of salt. Don't take me seriously. It's coming this holiday. Disney Dreamlight Valley is a quote unquote mesmerizing life simulation adventure. Now, this one really honestly looks like a Disney version of Sims or Animal Crossing. I don't know. I'm sure that there are going to be some kids that play it. I'm getting pretty sick of Disney contracting developers to just rip off the ideas from other developers and slap Disney characters into it. It's, uh, it happened with, um, God, what's that? Mickey, that Mickey Kart game. I feel like that came out recently. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm just, and like Disney Infinity, I'm just getting sick of it. It's either do something creative with your properties in the medium or don't do anything at all, Disney. Then we had an Adventures on the Go section, sizzle reel type montage thing. Uh, Live Live coming July 22nd. I still honestly have no idea what this game is. I understand that it's an HD 2D remake of an older game that a lot of people really like that is not super widely available. Other than that, no idea what it is, no interest. There is a game called let me, let me get this one right. Uh, Doramon Story of Seasons, Friends of the Great Kingdom. Now, I type at about 85 words per minute, and I had to pause the video to type out the title of this game. That means that your title is too long. It's word salad. Uh, I honestly, like, I, I'm going to seem super down on this game. I hate the art style. I think it looks cheap. I think it looks, uh, it's it's completely uninspired. It lo It's disinteresting, and it looks like it's almost any type of farm simulator game that you played on Facebook in 2010. I have like less than zero interest for this game. Minecraft Legends also coming to Switch. Now this was honestly pretty expected. Minecraft Dungeons did really really well on the Nintendo Switch and I when they announced Legends at the Xbox Bethesda showcase I thought 100% that is coming to Switch. Dragon Quest Treasures. Now, I really don't know anything about Dragon Quest, but everyone that plays it tells me how amazing it is. Now, because of that, I always end up perking up whenever a new Dragon Quest game comes up, and then inevitably I don't ever play it or buy it or do anything with it, but I know that I should eventually. Then we had another montage. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Hopes is coming or is available now. No Man's Sky is coming on October 7th. Plague Tale Requiem, I, I saw glimpses of that game, but like at the very beginning of the sizzle reel, and I immediately perked up because that's a game I'm super excited for. Then it was a cloud version, so color me shocked, I will not be playing that game on Switch. Then there was a game called Captain Velvet Meteor. I really didn't have any strong thoughts on that one way or another. Portal! The Companion Collection is one of my most anticipated Switch games uh, this year. It's available later today. In fact, if you're watching this video today, the day of the Direct, it's available right now. I have it downloading on my Switch and I'm super excited to play Portal again. There was a game called Harvestella. It's a new RPG that showed practically nothing to make it notably different in any way. Uh, it's just going to get lost in a sea of samey RPGs, like J Japanese RPGs. Then they said, oh, this is our final announcement. And they talked about Persona 5, that'll be coming on October 21st. Uh, Persona 4 Golden and Persona 4, uh, 3 Portable all coming to Nintendo Switch. Now this would have been a much bigger announcement had they had Microsoft not announced Persona coming to Xbox at the Xbox Bethesda Showcase, but Microsoft did announce that. And so as a result, this wasn't a huge thing. For people that are super fans of Persona, that's awesome. I've heard Persona 4 Golden is amazing. Even as a PlayStation Vita player, I still didn't play it. So I, and and especially the games are gonna be available on Game Pass. If I'm gonna play Persona games, I'm certainly gonna play them. 
in the subscription service that I already pay for. I'm not gonna buy them individually. Final thoughts, the Direct was fine. It, it was okay. I'm really beginning to wonder how much longer they can go into the Switch's life uh, without bringing the HD 3D Zelda games like Twilight Princess and Wind Waker to Switch. I feel like those games have to be done, right? They're, they're, they have to be done and they're just sitting there waiting for when the Switch starts to dip and the Switch isn't dipping. I'm also wondering if we're ever going to hear about Metroid Prime 4 uh, or Trilogy. There was a huge rumor going around yesterday about Metroid Prime uh, HD and the fact that this fall will be 20 years since the release of the original Metroid Prime but we haven't heard anything and it seems like every single time there's a direct there is a rumor that hey this is going to be the one we are finally going to see Metroid Prime Trilogy HD. I guess the only announcement that today that really got me hyped at all was that Portal is is coming later today or is out now uh, and and like there was definitely a lot here that was appealing to a lot of people. For me, um, obviously, the the Mega Man Battle Network games, more GB on Switch, please, please, please do that. Uh, Blanc looked really great. Mario Plus Rabbids, uh, I'll get excited about that when it's $5. And then Portal. And, and other than that, this was, it, it was fine. It wasn't bad. I don't want to like harp on it and shit all over it, but it was just fine. That's it. Anyways, um, I'll be back later on this week with m more videos. I mean, I might even be back later today. I got to talk about the PS5 uh, sales. So until then, just go play some games. <laughs>